Hello. Muslim uh, Pakistani rape gangs are at last getting some wider coverage, especially after the ordeal of Sophie, who, as a young girl, 12 years old, went to the police to complain about being raped by a man called Ali, who worked as a welfare officer, despite the police knowing he was a convicted paedophile. She was told by the uh, copper on duty to go home and come back with an adult when she wasn't drunk. Two men picked her up at the police station. It was on CCTV. And then she was raped in the car and then in a churchyard and then taken to a house where others repeatedly raped her all night. Later on, when everything hit the fan, key evidence was lost or destroyed, including CCTV showing these two men, which was key to Sophie's evidence. There's a surprise, the police losing evidence which would show their complete negligence. How could that happen? How can anyone know that story and others like it and not think that we have a broken system that punishes victims and defends the worst of criminals? And wouldn't it be just if everyone involved in this and other cases, police, social workers, politicians were prosecuted not just for criminal negligence, but for collusion in rape? In fact, for offering incitement to rape, because the Pakistani perpetrators know they are safe. The copper on the desk acted not as a police officer, but as a pimp, as did the council for employing Chef Ahmed, employed as the welfare rights officer, despite being known as a paedophile and child rapist. Often there is a call for education, that the men who commit these atrocities need to be educated to see how barbarous their behaviour is and to change, therefore, the culture of rape gangs. But it ain't going to happen for a number of reasons. One is that uh, these men feel religiously justified in what they do. And it's hard to educate an uneducated, bigoted rapist who believes his crimes are sanctioned by an ideology and by God that always thinks it's right for all time. Another reason it won't happen is that there is a deep misogyny in, in, in Islam. Poly polygamy, genital female mutilation, women having lesser rights than men in Sharia law, honour killings, being hidden behind burqas and niqabs, the list goes on. This is a culture that at its very worst does not respect women at all. And this is not just a few isolated nutters it's theologically ingrained into the popular thinking of Islam, which is why there are so many fundamentalists. It's not good. It's no good saying that these men don't understand their own ideology because it's all about their perception of it and their abuse of it and how they feel justified by, their, by Islam. And there must be something in it because you don't hear about Welsh Methodists saying their faith justifies the rape of children. You don't find Buddhists rubbing their hands in glee at the thought of female genital mutilation. There's not many honour killings among Quakers. And when Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan blamed the victims of rape for wearing very few clothes, i.e. these children were asking for it, it compounds the problem because apart from a theological underpinning of rape, gang, <coughs> the, the, the rapists now have a political defender in their own prime minister. If you read the proceedings of some of the trials, it's clear that the, 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 the girls raped are viewed as white trash. And these are the ones who are, are targeted. It is not Asians, not Muslims, it's not black girls, it's, it is white, poor girls. So it's also, of course, a racist crime. To say that we need to educate these men into a new way of thinking is also on a hiding to nothing because the Quran is seen as the word of God and cannot therefore be revised. And the life of Muhammad himself, a murdering paedophile, is seen as perfect and is therefore a role model. Progressive imams who wish to update or revise the Muslim faith, and of course there are such people, can do little because they become targets for assassins, because many Muslims do not want to be dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. They prefer to live by a desert code that was outmoded 500 years ago. And look at the idea of heaven. 
rivers of wine and barrels of virgins for the men. Notice the women don't get a mention other than as the virgins for men. So even the idea of heaven is not of a spiritual paradise, but a drunken knocking shop. And the Rotherham paedophiles receive half a million pounds in legal aid from public money while their victims remained uncompensated. Two years ago, in a, a very disturbing interview with uh, the trigonometry, rape survivor Dr Ella Hill said that she thought at least half a million non-Muslim, i.e. kafir girls, have been raped by grooming gangs operated by Muslim men in the United Kingdom in the past 40 years. Half a million. She said the gangs viewed the white girls as easy meat because they considered that they, are, that they do things that are considered immoral and therefore worthy of punishment. The punishment being rape and beatings in this case. And the immoral things include drinking and dancing. Yet, is, yet, yet it's the rapists who entice the children to do these things. And Dr. Hill said that the gangs use scriptures to justify rape and that their crimes are racially directed at poor white working class girls. So it does seem that education seems doomed to failure and all, all that is left is prosecution and punishment.